Welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture with your favorite photographer. It is Cardi. That's me. Today we are talking about your success in photography. And what if I told you that your success in photography is only partially dependent on you? What if I told you that the most powerful part of your photography is how it was perceived by the viewer. How our pictures are perceived, it's a hard pill to swallow. It really is. But our photography is only kind of about us. It's always been about how our work is seen by the individuals that choose to view it. So today we're talking about what we can do to change our viewers' perception of our photography. Our photography isn't about us. I mean, it's sort of about us. Yes, we make it. Yes, we're the creator. But really, our success in photography Really, our true success in photography comes from how our pictures are perceived by the viewer. That person seeing the photography, we have no control over this viewer. We have, it's, it's sad, but we actually have no control over that viewer. Their thoughts, their impressions, all we can do is pour our heart and our soul into that capture, try to say something with that photograph without words, and, and hope that our photography is received by the viewer with the same feeling and intent that we put in there. It's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing. That's our only goal, really is to have some sort of emotion felt by the viewer. It's a selfless, egoless approach with our viewer's impression being the most valued. Today, we are talking about the art of selfless photography. Exploring the ideas about our photography not just being for us, and also we're going to dive into how you as a photographer can adopt a selfless approach to your photography, to your art, and, and really affect the viewer in a greater way just simply by shifting your perception to your shooting for someone else beyond yourself. There's a powerful, powerful feeling that can, can be created with your photographs and you can evoke emotion without words. Let's get into a little bit of mastery. In this little segment, we're going to talk about what it means to be a selfless photographer and why it's so important. We're going to talk about the tendencies for photographers to become attached to their work and how it can hinder our ability to create a connection with the viewer. When we become too attached to our work, like you've heard me say before, you can't have a personal attachment to your photographs. When you have a personal emotional attachment to the work, it means it, it's hard to take crit criticism. It's hard to take critique from anyone, not just me, but it's hard to take a critique from your subject, from uh, your client. It's hard to take critique from anybody when you have a personal attachment to your photography. So we're going to look at some photographers that take a selfless approach to their photography and how it creates almost a more meaningful feeling to the work that they delivered. We're going to start by looking at the work of Patrick Holick. And right off the bat, with Holick's website, you get that feeling that 
He's very personal. Welcome, Herb. Welcome, Casper, Julie, Jason, Vicky. Welcome, everybody else who might be watching that I missed. I'm glad you guys are here. Looking at Patrick Holick's work, you can get it a feeling right off the bat that he's super personable. He's hugging his subject. That's Holick right there on the left. And when you look at his work, the feeling of his work is he shoots in a quite selfless way. I hope you guys are feeling what I see, but he has a very raw, raw feeling to his pictures that it's egoless. He really honors his subject. There's not a lot of bells and whistles to his photography, but at the same time, he shoots some of the biggest celebrities in the world. And looking at his studio work, this is Katie Holmes. This is Jimmy Fallon. This is Mark Ruffalo. Amber Heard. Danny Trejo. Looking at his photography and seeing like the power in the just his egoless approach. It, it's very I, I just really love Holick's work. I've been watching Holick for over 20 years. And it's the reason that he gets so much celebrity photography. This is Christina Ricci and Samuel L. The reason that he gets so much celebrity photography is because of this egoless, selfless approach that often involves humor. This is the work of Patrick Holick, the next photographer. Oh, I'm super excited about the shooter. The next photographer I'm going to show you is a photographer named Arnaud Moreau. And Arnaud Moreau, this shooter, when it talk, when you, when it feel, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm having a stroke because when it comes to a feeling of selfless photography, this shooter just, there's so many of his stories that really resonated with me. Welcome to Portland is, is the first one that I saw that I was like, oh yes, this photographer, I have to for sure share with my viewers. This story is called Welcome to Portland. And look at the feeling. And do you believe that this photographer is putting emotion in their work? Do you believe that this photographer has a selfless approach to photographing? I really, really enjoyed this work. Let me show you one more story that it, it really, this story, where is it? Did I miss it? Did I miss it, Mr. Moro? Mr. Moro? Oh, this is because I'm inside Welcome to Portland. That's why. All right, here it is. Here it is. It's called The Last Frontier. And this, this story kind of takes your breath away. And I hope you, I hope you agree. The color balance, the, the way that he's juxtaposed his photographs that should be vertical, I mean horizontal, and he's placed them vertically. This body of work really moved me. And as far as talking about a day where we're getting into an egoless approach and how really honoring the subject and honoring the viewer creates a different depth to your photography. Do you feel when you're looking at these photographs that they're made for you? I really feel that when I look at this photography, I feel like this photography was made because I needed to see it today. This is the greatness of being selfless with your pictures. Oh, so on the button. So on the button. 
This is the work of Arnaud Moreau. Oh, love, 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 love. I agree, Julie. I think that it's strong as well. So this is Arnaud Moreau. And <laughs> so, so much. We could look at Burning Man from last year. This will be the last story that we look at from Arnaud. But when you think about an egoless, selfless approach to photography where you're shooting for the viewer, you're trying to tell a story and bring that story to the viewer, I think Arnaud Moreau, he really, he really has it. Leave a comment if you've ever been to Burning Man. I have not ever really had a desire to go to Burning Man, but the photography that happens there just seems pretty incredible. This is the work of Arnaud Moreau. All right. Now, there's power and emotion in some photography, not all photography, but there is power and emotion in photography. And I'm going to show you some shooters that really dial in on emotion and the role of emotion in their photography. And these shooters create happiness, sadness, awe, and they use a technique and I want you guys to see if you can pull out these techniques that are making these emotional images. Is it composition? Is it lighting? What are they doing? We're going to start with looking at one of my favorite, favorite, favorite shooters. That is the work of Jay Maisel. This story is called Talking. When I was younger, I read a piece on Marlon Brando that detailed how he would sit and make believe he was talking on a payphone in a store in Times Square that had a view of the street. He explained that he was trying to observe the behavior of the people as they walked, talked, stood, etc. He wanted to, he wanted as an actor to observe exactly how they held their heads as they listened or held their heads as they talked. It struck me in this investigation to behavior was also most important to a photographer. As you look at these images, you'll see that most people talk with their hands, they touch, they embrace, they cajole, and accentuate all sorts of verbal communications with physical gestures. It's fun to notice things never noticed before. I really, really appreciate the work of Jay Maisel because of the nuance that he notices in his photography and he really before all else he honors his subjects he's a master master photographer and he really is a master of perspective and looking at Maisel's photographs he really has these incredible collections and in each one of his collections it, it really he asks us the viewer to look at a specific thing he writes a beautiful stanza about the photography that he's about to show you and then when you are looking at that photography you can't help but notice these how she's moving in close, these two people talking, you, th this woman looking at, like, you, you can't help but notice all of these beautiful little nuances to the photography, the subjects he chooses. And when you think about emotion, <laughs> this is it. I really, really appreciate the work of Jay Maisel. I've been looking at him really since I started photography. He is a true master and he travels around the world and makes these incredible series. This is just one from Jay Maisel, but to show you the power of emotion in photography, we're going to look at one more of his story. It's called Lovers. 
all heart at heart all photographers are to one degree or another voyeurs and to the fact that i am touched to see the expressions of kindness tenderness and warmth revealed whether it's love or lust if i see it i want to show it god knows it's too rare in this world so this is called lovers and <laughs> jay mazel he just you see how those little paragraphs those stanzas before he shares a body of work he just sets the tone for us the viewer and I think it's really important to show that today because this is something that you can do as a photographer you can set the tone before you share a body of photographs and I think Jay Maisel does it beautifully. And look at the decades that are passing. This is clearly the 70s. You're seeing all kinds of different eras. And the way that Jay Maisel chooses to organize his photographs into these collections just really makes the work have even more impact. Leave a comment if you agree. This is a category called Lovers by Jay Maisel. Now, you can see with Maisel, it's not necessarily about his pictures being perfect. But what they are, they're perfect at conveying the exact message that he's trying to convey. There's nothing about perfection but what Maisel honors is reality, and he honors the viewer. He honors feelings. He honors color, emotion, and decisive moment. I really appreciate this photographer's work. Do leave a comment if you appreciate it as well. The next photographer I have for you is a photographer that I discovered I want to say maybe 10, 15 years ago. His name is Lane Coder. And Lane Coder, do let me know if you feel emotion when you look at the work of Lane Coder. I've always been blown away by this photographer's work. And I... I, I just love how he connects moments like this with a model to environmental. This is an aerial photograph. This is lightning. Poorly exposed snow photograph. Like it's, it's photography as art and it is definitely shot for the viewer for a reaction from us i really i mean this is a vogue magazine shooter by the way and i've loved this photographer's work for a really long time that's beautiful beautiful and you can see he's here on this location but he also is on assignment shooting this band This is really incredible, incredible use of slow shutter speed and light. Look at the shutter speed slow. He's got a light source, which looks like it's in his, it looks like the light's in his hand, but it looks also that it's coming from offset. He's got crazy light streaks in here. This is a, and the location, the location is amazing. So with Lane Coder, Lane has this juxtaposition thing that's going on. He has a dreamy, ethereal. He has a direct, like, in your face. He's got many different approaches that make you feel something. Wow, that looks like my recent series. This is the work of Lane Coder. Definitely leave a comment if you're feeling the emotion in this photographer's work. Now, 
we're going to get into the viewer's role as uh, an observer in the state of photography and how the viewer, how their importance and their interpretation of an image is just as important as the photographer's intent. The viewer's interpretation of an image is equally as important as the photographer's intent. <clears throat> and we're going to look at the work. I'm sure you guys remember the show, The Deadliest Catch. The Deadliest Catch, um, oh, that is not it at all. The Deadliest Catch, Ooh, this photographer, his name is Corey Arnold. And Corey Arnold is known for being on the Bering Sea and photographing. I, I, I mean, let me just open this in another tab so you can really get a, a sense of his Bering Sea work. I did remember yesterday when I was opening it up that it took a little bit to load, but he got hired by National Geographic, which is kind of incredible. Getting hired by National Geographic to shoot basically, mon it's called unplugging the selfie generation. And this story, I just think it's, it's dope. Basically exposing the selfie generation to nature now, unfortunately, it's looking very much like these pictures aren't clickable, so I can't make them any larger. Hello, Safari. Yeah, it looks like um, Corey's site is a little... There it is. There it is. So this... Yeah, it looks like it's taking a little bit of time here to load, but this is Corey... Arnold and they basically took a group of you can see how unfortunately his site is taking a little bit of time to load here with my super fast internet he took a bunch of kids millennials that have never really spent any time in nature to nature to make this story unfortunately this site is not loading in a way that's great which is unfortunate so, uh, the viewer's role, we are going to, oh, here we go. There we go. So, finally, Corey Sight, this is a story called Why Cities Are Going Wild. And the viewer's role, look at these photographs. As a viewer, the first thing I ask myself as a viewer is, are these real? Are these photographs real? Is this staged? Are these fake animals? Is this set up in some way? But this is shot for Nat Geo. This is all real photography. And the level of patience we were talking last week about how you choose the type of photography based that you do based on the level of patience that you have. Clearly, Corey Arnold has a very high level of patience. Know that um, how we interpret this photography is very important. And also, looking at this work, we also give Corey... We, we elevate him to a certain level because he's able to create work that, that makes us question reality. I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. Unfortunately, Corey's site is a little bit, it, it's load heavy, doesn't work very well on Safari. And I don't want to slow down this train of education just on one particular photographer. But know that when we're looking at photographs and how, how we react, how photography resonates with us as the viewer, you can see there's benefits as a photographer to, to shoot in such a way that will in, evoke curiosity, shoot in such a way that goes beyond just our typical 
normal subject matter, poses, and ideas. The photographers that I'm choosing to show you today, I feel like they push just a little bit further than, I guess, regular photographers. <laughs> Let me show you and talk just a little bit about evolving as a photographer and how important it is to evolve and constantly improve our craft. We all have to evolve. And the reason that I created this program <clears throat> is to help emerging photographers evolve, help whatever level of photography that you're in or at right now, I'm trying to help you get to that next spot. I made a blog post recently just, and it works perfectly for talking about how you can evolve as a photographer. I chose recently to put together this blog post and I selected several of my viewers photographs to showcase to the people who look at my vlog. This is Devon Shu and know that this photographer is, and he was 20 years old when he made this photograph. He's currently 21. He's an Indian born photographer, started very young, I think at like 15 years old. At now he's 21. He's in photography school in Australia and evolving as a photographer, clearly, as you can see. This is another one of my viewers. Her name is Julie Legovska. She's a Ukrainian born photographer, lives in Toronto right now. She's actually my second assistant. She's my retoucher. And how her work has progressed through watching the show, through really taking critique and, and, and putting herself out there as a photographer, falling in love truly with shooting people and shooting portraits. This girl was really the first model that she ever photographed. And this has now spawned a whole new body of work for Julie. So it's brilliant. This is Casper Hillman. Casper is a photographer from Europe who is really now zeroing in on shooting cars and his car photography, this photograph in this series won Automobile Photography of the Year last year on my program. You can see clearly Casper takes it seriously and he's really evolving as a shooter. Anytime his work falls below this level, I'm quick to catch him and remind him that he has the ability to make car photography at the highest level. So constantly, constantly mentoring and helping Casper. This is Jesper Anderson. <sighs> we call him Hell Dog. He's a photographer from Denmark, shoots wildlife incredibly, has the patience of a god, and finds and creates the most beautiful wildlife photography that like I've seen. He also has a business. He he's a custom wooden floor restorer. So he he does photography part-time. I wish that he could do it more. Um, he's brilliant and makes these photographs amazingly. This is another photographer. His name is Bear Thunder. He shoots incredible, incredible macro. These, this is a one millimeter scale to show you how small these items are that he shoots and stacks and makes. This is a project he's been working on for two years during the time that he's been watching this show. And it's evolved to the point where he's making, I mean, this photo, uh, this is what Bear Thunder is doing. Um, and it's museum quality macro work. This is saffron which just shows you like how small these things are. So it, it's, it's brilliant. I'm, I'm lucky that I have like this, an amazing audience. This is the work of Herb Ladrillo. This is a uh, conceptual photography, personal project, just incredibly creative, incredibly talented. This is my assistant, Jason Senior Warbucks Williams and a photograph he made last year. Jay's constantly progressing, constantly, constantly trying to get to the next level with his photography. 
it, it's brilliant. It's Mark Fox. Mark is a British-born photographer. Lives in the Ecuadorian rainforest. He's a concert. He's a conservationist. This is environmental portrait of the year. Um, he, I, I need not say anything else. Like it, it's right here. <laughs> and Matt Howe. Um, Matt uh, made this lifestyle photo. This is also an automobile photo. Um, it's important as a photographer to evolve. And the reason that I'm showing you just some of the people who watch this program, everybody who watches this show has sort of agreed with themselves that they want to get better at photography. And in fact, they're going to do the things that they need to do in order to get there whether that's whether that's watching me or doing self-directed projects or shooting lot like all of them are learning exactly where they are with their pictures and what they have to do to get to the next level which i really appreciate i made that i, I couldn't honor everybody because again like I want to save some people so I can do another one and honor some people that I didn't do in this blog post. So expect more of those. Um, if you're not following me on Substack, definitely I'm going to do a whole episode on Substack because that community is so important. So we have to evolve as photographers. And in talking about my viewers, you have to be a part of a community. This is another thing that Turtle says that Substack is changing his life. It really, I am going to do an episode this week on Substack because I think that it is that important. Substack really has changed so many things for me. First of all, what it is, it's a blog platform that photographers and writers can use. Let's go, Gregory. Glad you're here. Gregory is also on Substack. Most of my viewers are on Substack. Malcolm, I'm so glad that you're here. What Substack is, is a blog platform, but it's like a paid blog platform, meaning you can put, if you choose, you can put your work behind a paywall. This is my Substack. I have been consistently posting once a week for 10 weeks. So now I've created a nice archive of content here. Thing that's brilliant about it is how I have mine set up is you can see my latest post if you're a free subscriber or just browsing. But if you want to see my archives, you have to pay and be a, feature, a paid subscriber. And then that gives you access to everything. And also as a photographer, you can keep everything behind a paywall. It's just a very cool platform that photographers in the know are really like blowing up on this platform. I have now like, and I did this completely organically. I started with zero people on my Substack, I'm now like almost like at 60 or 70. I have five or six paid subscribers and this is all organic. This is all just from people finding me that are looking for photography on that platform, which there's lots of people. This is gonna be the new Instagram. Just FYI, you heard it here first. Substack for photographers, it's the new Instagram. If you're watching this and you're not on substack.com, jump on it um, and start a blog immediately. All right. I'm, I'm very happy, by the way, that Substack is changing your life. Malcolm says that you guys make me mad with your epic skills. So Substack can lead me into talking about the importance of photography community. I didn't have a photography community. I had been teaching workshops. I had been teaching in in some schools but only when I started this podcast did I really realize like there's so many photographers that need to kind of band together and share what they know it's group think so I created my own I created a discord community please join the discord if you're not already all you need to do is look in the video that you're watching right now you'll see the discord link join it and start submitting photos seeing 
other photographers that are at your level or almost at your level or maybe a little bit above you and you're learning from each other. Imagine Gregory learns something on Tuesday. Gregory makes a post oh, in, my, in my Discord that says, oh my God, I just learned how to do X, Y, Z. He posts it in the resource section of my Discord. Now there's almost 200 other photographers that see that there's a new post in the resource section. They all check it and all of them simultaneously just learned that one thing that Gregory just learned. And now they don't have to deal with the trouble that Gregory was dealing with while he was trying to solve his problem because one person went through it and fixed the problem they share and now the whole network knows how to fix that problem. That's group think. That's how Mr. Beast does it. That's how we do it here on the Cardi Crew Discord server. If you guys know something, you learn something, you share it. And now everybody that's in the server, now they know it. And um, they're, it's just, it's paying it forward and it's beautiful. Please join this amazing community and be a part of the sharing. It's brilliant. So. Um, and also, by the way, it's great for exposure. Be, I have an introduction section where you get to share your social media. You get to share a little bit about you, where you're from, and it's a constant source of inspiration. Obviously, my Discord and my photography programs go like this. So if you're watching this right now and not in the Discord, jump in the Discord. It's like how you get access to us and me behind the scenes while we're not live. Ha! So speaking of community, I have not done a photo walk in a good long time. And I think that it's time to do a community photo walk. So if you're in Toronto City, Toronto, which is where I am, I'm doing a photo walk Saturday, which is coming up a week from yesterday. This Saturday, we're going to do a photo walk. I'm going to make a formal announcement. I'm going to make posts about it and possibly a video about it. I'm trying to get a whole bunch of photographers together downtown to walk, talk, and I'll make a video. So if you're in Toronto and you're thinking about doing a little photo walk, you're thinking about where's my photography community, join us. Um, there could be just me. And if it's just me, then that's it. But there could be 5, 10, 20 of us walking around making photographs. We're going to make a video. We're going to bring it to you. So excited about that. If you're in Toronto, there's an opportunity to meet me and um, walk and talk with Cardi. That's happening on Saturday. I'm also going to be doing... I also, by the way, have one-on-one -on -one training that many of you are taking advantage of, which I appreciate you, you know who you are, who have booked me for one-on-one -on -one training. Many of you aren't quite comfortable with having your photographs reviewed live on the air. Because of that, what I've done is I've started to do intensive one-on-one -on -one online where you can book me for one or two hours. It's on sale right now. The price is lower than it has ever been. Hint, hint, here's an opportunity. I have some slots left for April. If you'd like to get in, hint, hint, you, um, book me for some one-on-one. -on -one. I promise you it'll help. At the end of the one-on-one, -on -one, you get a video back. It's not just an online conversation. It's an actual intensive one-hour or two-hour workshop that you get the video afterwards that you can watch over and over and over again. So um, consider that. And know that the whole angle with selflessness, the whole angle, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be an example and I'm trying to be selfless by making myself available to you um, in many different ways through these live podcasts where you can ask me anything. By the way, we have a new feature. During any of my live shows, you can type command question which just looks exact. Command is the exclamation mark. If you type question like this in chat, it does a thing and says, hey, this person has a question. And then you ask your question and then I can see it. So that's just another little hint. Also, you can make clips. You just type command clip. It makes a vertical clip for me. That's definitely helpful. 
And yes, guys, there's I, I I no longer review photographs during behind the picture. I do them one day a week, which is usually Thursday. My during the week shows are now at 6 p.m. In case you guys aren't or didn't know, I'm doing them at 6 p.m. just because literally over like 70 percent of the people who voted on my poll has requested that my late my live streams during the week start after six so they are at after six it makes my evenings incredibly busy um and like i don't get much time but uh if it's easier for you guys amazing i know that it makes it hard for my european viewers which is why I make behind the picture still at 2 p.m. so you guys can watch something live. It's tricky because I'm trying to please a whole bunch of people, but again, I'm trying to be selfless. I'm trying to be egoless. I'm trying to put myself out there for you. Please utilize me is all I'm trying to say. Today's episode really was all about um, our photography isn't for us. It, as much as we'd like to think that it is and we can shoot for us and just for us and not share often and just shoot like um like Vivian Meyer for us uh, but know that when you share your photography whether whether you're sharing your photography to social media or your website honoring the viewer and 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 really respecting the viewer, giving the viewer uh, a a journey, giving the viewer a feeling when they look at our photographs, evoking emotion, taking a stand, making statement photographs, all of these things respect the viewer, and I think that that's what we all have to think about just a little bit more early on with your photography. You're thinking about how can I make a technically perfect picture? Is it in focus? Is the composition right? Like once you start getting through that and mastering the basics, you move into style. And while you're on that journey of style, how are you going to make your photographs mean something? How are you going to make your photographs speak without words? You have to now start tapping into different things and different perspectives. And the perspective I wanted you guys to think about today is when you make a photograph of a person, there is you, one perspective. There is the person who is being photographed, who has the complete opposite perspective. While you're directing that subject, you both have to understand that you're working towards a common goal and that common goal is to evoke a reaction from that third party that you have no control over and that's the one that sees the photograph are they going to be instantly bored or are they going to be are they go <laughs> you're so nice turtle are they going to be um curious are they going to want to look at more from you based on that single photograph or in that one photograph are they going to pass judgment on you and say okay we got it you know it, it, your subject matter how hard you push how hard you try all of that all of those ideas that emotion that feel that's all to honor the viewer the next time you look through your camera and I know I, I've never asked anybody to do this, but the next time that you look through your camera and shoot photographs, the next time that you're at your computer and you're looking at your own work, try to look at your own work like it's not yours. Earlier in this episode, I talked about the importance of not having an emotional attachment to your photographs. To sum it up, if you're able to look at your photographs without the emotional attachment, you'll be able to see them as a viewer. And if they're not moving you, why would they move anyone else? So we have to kind of 
turn ourselves inside out a little bit when we make photographs and not necessarily be in our heads, but <clears throat> when we're editing, when we're looking at the finals, when we're choosing finals, respect the viewer, respect the viewer and know that we live in the most image savvy time everybody knows photography everybody sees more photography per day now than they ever have before respect that and respect the viewer and make photographs that move people make them angry create curiosity and draw questions and, and if you have that approach with your pictures people will always be coming back to see more of your photographs. If you have any questions, now would be the time. I'd be happy to answer any questions. If you guys have any comments, definitely leave comments below um, this video. Likes and shares are how this podcast has continued to grow. Keep in mind, I've been doing this podcast for just over two years and I've done three podcasts a week for two years and the amount of content that we're putting out there, it's just a matter of time before people like you find it and it starts to resonate. Uh, that's the thing that's great about YouTube is your content finds the right people if you're making the right content. And I'm so happy that you guys have found me. I have a new viewer. His name is Hervé. He's all the way from Paris and France. And he's found my podcast and watched one and then was like, okay, that's a good podcast. And then he watched another one and he was like, okay, you got me. And he's making these comments in French and I'm using Google Translate to translate into French so I can have conversations with him. Hervé has also found us. So um, sharing is caring. And if this podcast resonates with you, if my education, if my way of teaching, if my way of um, bringing inspiration to you resonates tell somebody um, you have no idea how word of mouth is how I've grown this podcast just bring one other person to watch this with you and um, it helps me greatly so everybody who has done that I thank you please consider subscribing if you love photography if you're as obsessed about photography as we are this is the place for you know that um and also know that you get better every single time you look through that little window and take a picture it's all about being selfless not like this chick right here who's obviously clearly not selfless at all guys i hope you appreciated today's episode there's lots of great content to watch if this is the first time you've ever seen me last week we did an episode on finding your perfect photography niche I think you should watch that one next. I appreciate you guys. We will see you on Tuesday. Much love. Let's go, Griffin. Glad you're here. I appreciate you all. Join my Discord if you're not in there already. You'll find the friendliest most talented, amazing people there that are going to break their legs to answer questions for you. So make sure you're in the Discord. I appreciate you guys all for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Make sure you watch my video on three reasons only to shoot manual.